Okay, all right, uh, we're now at four past the hour, so we'll get into it. Welcome everybody to the Qbert community meeting. It is the 16th of August, 2023. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I think we've got a reasonably light agenda today. If anyone does have anything they wish to bring up in this meeting, by all means, please add it to the agenda and notes or the open floor. And if the sound of the truck outside is too loud, let me know and I can close my window. Um, so first up is, do we have anyone new on the call who um, either this is their first meeting or if they've been in the meeting before and have uh, not introduced themselves and would like to say uh, g'day and a little bit about them. Yeah, hi, this is Hubbard Smith. Nice to meet you all. I, I joined a previous one previous meeting. Um, I'm in Salt Lake City. I'm working on a startup involving Kubert. Great to be here. Welcome, Howard. We, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, so for uh, the benefit of Howard, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go through the schedule check-in. We'll have a quick check-in on the upcoming events and open CFPs. Um, if anyone has anything to add to the agenda before, by all means, go to it. Then we'll um, have a quick look, look through the triage man and list review that I've got there. Um, the truck's gotten really loud for me at least, so I'm just going to take a quick minute um, to uh, close my window. I can't hear, but before I do, I'm just going to open up the schedule, so at least we've got something to look at. All right. Um, now, I've just had five days of holidays, so I presume that the Kubernetes release happened yesterday. Is that correct? Yeah, happened yesterday. Awesome. Well, congratulations to the Kubernetes release team. Uh, so for us, next week, we'll have our version 1.1 .1 alpha cut. So it's starting to get pretty serious. Uh, next up, we'll have a quick look at what events are on the horizon. Um, I think we still just have the two the two Qcon China talks accepted, which will be in September. Uh, I think next week we'll hear about uh, Qcon North America to see what has been accepted there. We do have some open CFPs for some KCDs, Sri Lanka, Texas, and Denmark. Um, they're open for the next month and a half, or I guess a month. And there's also Open Source Summit for anyone who is um, nearby or interested in going to Tokyo, Japan. Um, and yes, this is, um, you can always find this information in the Qbert community wiki events. Alrighty, still nothing on the agenda or the open floor. I had a look through the pull requests. I couldn't see anything that needed any attention. Uh, so thank you everyone for taking care of them. Um, everything that needed to be looked at had a beautiful green LGDM or approve on it. A couple of things on the mailing list uh, I thought would be helpful to highlight. Um, one was for multi-tenancy support. So as I understand it, this is something that's being introduced to take care of, to help um, out. So I think Barack's supposed to email has more information. Uh, there's a little bit of an incident of uh, um, indication where in the same keyboard being upgraded and upgrades have happened to the, the launcher pods. Um, yep. uh, if this requires a migration of the virtual machines and if there's a resource quota that can um, lead to a little bit of conflict. And so this multi tenancy support is being introduced in order to assist that. Um, all the information is, is here. Um, it's being managed by the managed tenant quota operator. Um, yep, so that's on the mailing list. And I'll just click here really quick. This is in the Qbert managed tenant quota uh, repo. Let's put up a, it was, that's not the right one to look at. 
So plenty of information in there. Um, some of the same folks who can't really comment on this are probably the best place for um, comments and thoughts on the mailing list. And the second point is, uh, I think last week, um, just everyone's seen that the HashiCorp have changed the license of a bunch of this stuff uh, from the MPL to the, um, the business PL. Uh, this has been raised on the mailing list by Daniel and uh, Brian has opened an issue to track this in Qubit Qubit. Uh, the issue is there. Daniel has listed out the list of suspected uh, projects and he's also included a link to the FAQ. Um, if your project is not... Am I hard to hear? Uh, uh, if that's the case, let me see what's going on with my microphone. I can turn up. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Oh, okay, excellent. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully you didn't miss anything too important. Uh, if you did, it's in the meeting agenda. Um, yeah, so the HashCorp have changed their license. Um, Daniel's been kind enough to list the, um, he's gone through and had a look at the, what he thinks is the, he suspects are the uh, impacted projects. Um, if you are a maintainer of one of the smaller projects, it is probably worthwhile, or if you know, and your project isn't listed there, um, please speak up. He's included an FAQ as to, um, to determine whether or not your project has been impacted. Uh, so the CNCF at the moment is uh, investigating what impact there is, broadly speaking, and we are monitoring that from that end to figure out whether we need to change anything. And there were some comments um, as well on that mailing list. So if you've got thoughts, please add them there. Um, CDI version 1.57 was released. Can I, yes, can I ask a quick question? Is is there any clarification as to what license changed to what? That's a good question. Uh, someone um, probably on the one line, right here, it was the MPL to the UPL. So the UPL, mm. that's what I said. Okay. License. Yeah, I'm sure there's a write up someplace. If somebody knows the pointer, that'd be great. Thank you so much. You, you answered it. You know, I think in this email, um, the CNCF one. No, this one. CNCF Foundation, I think. Oh, Brian's put a link into the um, chat, which will have more information in there. Thank you, Brian. Yes, uh, CDI version 1.5 has been released. Uh, well done to the CDI and storage team. Um, so this is meant to be used together with Kubo 1.0. And is the main um, the main added functionality is the implementation of populators for CDI transformers. And it also made um, populators in data volumes more transparent users. So well done to the team. And one more thing, I think this was more just for the uh, SIG monitoring team, um, just in case anyone from that team is in line. Uh, this is a question as to whether or not their tests are deliberately um, being missed by something. There will is a detail. Uh, tests aren't being added to the test grid which means the test line doesn't have been inside the pre-submit test grid listing. And the question is, is this intentional? So if anyone is on the uh, monitoring team uh, and can answer this question, if you could please write back to Daniel, that would be appreciated. All right, add with 50 bucks as well. And I couldn't see anything um, that hadn't been responded to. So thank you everyone for responding to them. Um, that has been uh, a very August appropriate agenda, I believe. Nice and short. Does anyone on the line have anything that they wish to bring up uh, or any questions that they'd like to ask?
I'll take that as an act. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. What do you guys reckon? I think something's happened. My internet is in the last couple of weeks, but I need to investigate. Um, apologies for the rough audio. Uh, hopefully, by the next time we meet, I'll have improved it. Um, if not, I guess it'll just be bad audio again. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. Uh, hopefully you have a wonderful week, weekend, and the start of next week, and we'll see you then. Goodbye. Thank you for joining.